Welcome back to the Nairpin channel. Now, last week I told you a bunch of reasons why you should try narrowband imaging. And today I'm actually gonna tell you what you need to buy. And I'm gonna give you very general advice here. I'm not gonna name any specific exact pieces of equipment. But in the first half of the video though, I'm gonna to talk to those of you who are starting from ground zero. And in the second half of the video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys who have, you know, been doing this for a little while. Maybe you already have even a dedicated cooled color camera. Now this is where you need to start. You need to start with a mount. Now, pretty much anybody in this hobby, whether or not they shoot one shot color or they shoot mono, narrow band like I do, they're gonna tell you that you need to start with a good foundation and that foundation should be your mount. Now, surprisingly though, actually you don't need to get a very big mount. As a matter of fact, I would recommend that you actually get a small mount. A couple of the requirements that it needs to have is number one, it needs to have go-to abilities. That way you can guide with it later on. And it should have a capacity in the range between 20 and 30 pounds. This guy right here has a 25 pound capacity and he can actually handle quite a bit. The next piece of advice that I'm going to give you is actually about the scope. Now, this, the scope should be the next thing that you buy if you're starting from ground zero. Do not, do not go buy a big scope. Start small. This guy over here, this is a 61 millimeter scope. This is the perfect place to start. Not something ginormous like this. This is a 120 millimeter refractor. Trust me, you will hate yourself if you start with a big scope. Starting with a small scope like this, everything will be easier. Guiding will be easier, tracking will be easier, or whatever. It, you'll probably start out just tracking your images. You know, just finding stuff in space will be easier because you have a wider field of view. And by the way, don't think to yourself, oh, I need a big telescope in order to get those tiny little objects in the sky. Actually, no. In mono narrowband imaging, okay, the majority of the targets that we shoot are gigantic. For example, the Veil Nebula Complex, it's like 60 times bigger than the moon. It's really, really big. Most nebulas are huge. You just can't see them because you know our eyes aren't sensitive enough. Start with a small scope. There's lots of 60 millimeter and 70 millimeter doublets out there. I wouldn't go any bigger than 70 millimeter. There's also the William uh, Red Cat, which is a great scope too, although that one is quite expensive. Really, a doublet is all you're going to need because you're only focusing one specific section of wavelength, of the wavelength of light through the whole rainbow. This guy right here, this is actually an acro, so he's not even an ED scope at all. There's no ED glass in this whatsoever, but I still use this for narrowband imaging because, you know, we're, we're focusing a tiny little sliver. So perfect apple chromatic correction is not necessary here. You can kind of lowball things. You don't need to go as expensive as you would with a one-shot killer camera. With a one-shot killer camera, you're gonna find yourself spending a lot more money because you'll need an apple and you need to get all three major wavelengths of light, red, green, blue, in focus at the same time. Mono narrowband imaging, not the same case here. We can just focus on one little sliver at a time. So we have our mount, we have a scope. Hopefully you've had some visual fun with it too, with an eyepiece or two. The next thing that you should buy, and this is very important, is a guide camera, okay? And a guide camera, this must be a mono guide camera. Basically all guide cameras are mono guide cameras. It's important that it's mono because, well, they're the best for guiding. And also, regardless of whether or not you choose to maybe change your mind later on and go with one shot color for a little while, the mono guide camera is still gonna be useful to you as a guide camera. Also with that, you should buy a hydrogen alpha filter. Stick this baby on here, put it in your scope, and just start taking some pictures. Take some black and white images, and you'll be astounded using a hydrogen alpha filter. I mean, you could basically just about point at any section of sky, track your images, you know, do some two minute exposures. You know, most mounts with a little tiny scope on there will handle a two minute exposure, and then stack them together and just see what you come up with. Stacking mono black and white photos are extremely, extremely easy to do. You just basically stack them together with your calibration frames and just stretch them and you will be able to see really some really cool things. And this won't require any tremendous amount of experience. It'll be very easy 
to start doing this kind of imaging. So the next purchase you should make, and once again, this is a pair purchase. You should buy both of these at the same time. Is you should buy a guide scope. And then you should also buy a cooled mono camera. Now, I'm actually going to give you some model numbers that I recommend right now. This could change in the future, we'll see. So, I would suggest going for a camera with a small sensor. Why small? Because smaller is always, always, always easier in this hobby. You want easy when you're starting out. Start with a small sensor. This guy right here, this is actually a 178mm, they don't even make this anymore. Some that I would recommend would be a 183mm or the brand new 533mm that have just that's just come out from ZWO. Those are great cameras to start on. The 533 especially, that, that is like my top pick right now. Another really great camera out there to look for, and I would suggest buying this one used, is the 1600mm. That is a camera that I have, and that camera will keep you going for many years. And of course, there's also the more expensive 294mm, but the point is here, buy a cooled mono camera and a guide scope and so what you're going to do is take the guide camera from the scope and you're going to put it into the guide scope and then hook this guy up to your actual telescope and then start learning how to guide and with that you'll be able to take long exposures and then you will really really start get getting a lot of fantastic details the next piece of equipment that you should buy is actually your second filter along with the filter wheel. Now, it could be a manual filter wheel or an automatic filter wheel. I would highly recommend getting an automated filter wheel. The five position filter wheel made by ZWO is a great choice. It's also very light and it will keep your gear light, which is also good and it makes the hobby easy. Let's put it that way. Now, with your hydrogen alpha filter and your oxygen filter, that's that next one I suggest you buy is the oxygen filter, you'll actually be able to do a ton of imaging with that. You'll actually even be able to do some false color, two color type images. And we call these HOO. It's where we map the hydrogen to the red channel and then the oxygen to the blue and the green channels. And it really will create some really cool pictures and they actually look very natural looking. They don't look very narrow band. So they're pretty easy to process too. Yeah. And by the way, yeah, even if you're just starting out with just the HA filter, there's actually some tricks even that you can get some basically red type pictures out of it that kind of look like their color. So if you really, really need that color early on, don't despair. You can do it through processing. I'll show you later on. After you've mastered HOO or hydrogen and oxygen, uh, your last thing is to capture the S2 filter, the sulfur filter. And sulfur is also another red color. This is a great one to have in your tool bag because it's probably the most light pollution proof filter that there is. Great for nights with 100% moon. And then that will complete your filter wheel essentially. Now, there are many other accessories that you can add on to later on. Obviously, you can get two heaters. You can get a ZWO ASI Air Plus or Pro. I have the Plus and I also have a Pro too as well. There are electronic autofocusers. This is another highly recommended item. This will really automate and make your life easier. Another item is a Batnov mask, and that's actually something that's really cheap. You can even get that early on. So that's kind of the pathway into mono imaging with a narrowband camera if you are starting from ground zero. Now, for those of you who are already imagers, maybe you've even got a cooled one-shot color camera, kind of like this one. This is an Orion G21. It's a 20 megapixel one-shot color camera. The first thing that I'd actually suggest you try out is get yourself a dual narrowband filter and just kind of, you know, get your feet wet a little bit. The processing, it's a little bit different. There's actually a lot of tricks to the trade in this type of processing, but basically what a dual narrowband filter will teach you is it'll, it'll kind of get you going in HOO type imaging, which is hydrogen and oxygen mapped to two of the three main band passes. Now, I would definitely recommend that you stay away from tri-band filters. Those I would not recommend. And one of the reasons for that is because some of those band passes happen on the same color channel for a one-shot color camera. And you start to get what's called quantization error, which is where two similar values will cancel each other out during the bare matrix deburying process done by the firmware and the camera. So yeah, it, like I said, the, the problem with 
any one shot color camera is that they're very inefficient compared to a mono camera. If you're gonna jump into a mono camera, all right, once again, same advice for those who started out from the ground up, is just get one filter, and it's a hydrogen alpha filter, take some black and white images, those black and white images will just blow your mind at all the details that are there and just the crispness of the clouds that are in space. And, and what is so cool about hydrogen alpha is that you will be able to see the shape of space. That's always a pleasure, okay? And that is what you should try to bring out in your images. Then add a oxygen three filter, okay? And then start doing some processing that, get better at that. And then once you've kind of conquered that echelon, then go on and add that final S3 filter, okay? And then of course there's a filter wheel you probably will wanna add in there. I would definitely recommend getting the filter wheel when you get the second filter, okay? You don't wanna be changing filters by hand. You'll get fingerprints on them. It just complicates flats and so forth and calibration frames. Trust me, filter wheel, make your life easier. Even if it's a manual filter wheel, it'll make your life easier. So, once you've got the three different filters, then probably get yourself an autofocuser. Autofocusers really help and it'll help you nail that focus every single time. Every single filter will have a different point of focus, so you need to refocus for every single filter regardless. So that's kind of my advice for those of you who are you know, already into imaging. And trust me, when you go from one shot color into the narrow band imaging spectrum of things, you will just be blown away at all the stuff that is there for you. There is just a lot more imaging to be done once you switch to narrow band. And if you've been in this hobby for a while and you kind of get the feeling like, you know, I kind of shot everything that's out there with my one shot killer camera, I, I don't feel like there's much more to accomplish here. Try narrow band because trust me, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with this mono, with the mono cameras and narrow band images. So I hope this motivates you to get into this type of imaging. These kind of videos I put out because I'm excited about astrophotography and I hope you get excited about it too and that the progress of acquiring equipment and upgrading your gear and so forth and just being able to do this type of astrophotography is not painful. You know, and once again, biggest piece of advice I think I can give you, start small, start with a small sensor, start with a small scope, it will make your life easier.